Live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live at VMworld 2016 here in Las Vegas. This is SiliconANGLE, Media is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of the Cube and founder of SiliconANGLE. Our next guest is Chuck Smith, who's the Vice President and General Manager of the America Server Business Unit at HP Enterprise, or HPE, and Don Jones, VP of the ISV Strategic Alliance, again at HP Enterprise, HPE. Welcome back to the Cube, guys. Great to yeah, see you guys again. Good seeing you. Uh, we had a great chat uh, at uh, HP Discover uh, this past year um, on the real the strategy of the data center. Obviously, you know, composable. It's been a great mess. I love that. And you're not really hearing composable here as VMworld, but you guys are partnering heavily with VMware. VMware has a great position in the data center. So the first question is, what are you guys doing here at, at, at VMware? And what are some of the conversations? What's the relationship with HP E and VMware? Anything new? Extension? Obviously, the partnership's been there for a while. So maybe I'll start on the partnership and you can talk about the technology. That sounds good, yeah. yeah. So if you think about it, um, there are more, eight, uh, more VMware products running on HP infrastructure than any other infrastructure provider on the planet. So there's a natural synergy for us to work closely with VMware. Michael always jokes the first call he made when he decided to do that acquisition was to Meg Whitman to, to guarantee that VMware would remain independent. So we're excited to work with these guys. We've got some great solutions that we're announcing this week and we've got good products already in the market that customers can buy today. I asked uh, the VMware team, because I'm going to interview Pat Gelsinger tomorrow at 3 o'clock, so tomorrow, Tuesday, 3 o'clock, Pat Gelsinger will be live. And I said, look it, this is really post-EMC Federation VMware. You know, long live Dell Technologies, but VMware being independent is a real critical part of this ecosystem, what I call VMware Ecosystem 2.0, which is, listen, everyone's going to have direct access to the technology, no favoritism going on of, of any kind, not that there was, I could prove, but the, the scuttlebutt was with EMC, kind of that invisible hand, always had that kind of vibe going on. And that was kind of a cloud around that ecosystem in the past, but now the independence is key. And so we're going to talk about that, but, but they're clear. VMware does not want to be known as Dell Technologies, you know, back pocket, you know, partner. They're looking to be very independent, so how are you guys taking that and, and how are you taking it to the next level? Because now VMware clearly put it in the South out there saying, no, 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 we are rebooting the ecosystem. That's my word, that's not their word. But yeah. this new 2.0 ecosystem is cloud. It's essentially the composable message. Yep, I mean, way oversimplifying it, there's really three pillars we're thinking about. The first is, how do we get together and do joint innovation? And that's truly joint innovation, differentiates both of us, where one plus one equals three. The second is, What's our go-to-market strategy to go tell that story and drive customer demand and adoption? And then finally, what's our precision sales cadence in the field with the, with the VMware reps and the HP reps jointly calling on customers and driving those great solutions to market? Chuck, talk about the technology play because HP has always partnered. Ever, I've known HP, I worked there for seven years back in the late 80s, 90s, even through it's now. The DNA of HP is partnerships, ecosystem partners and being open. Obviously in the data center with servers, well, I mean, so you, you started with Composable, and, and Composable and, and VMware and, and vSphere and, and all the elements from a, from a VMware portfolio are integrated into our strategy there. Um, you know, that's not solely our strategy, but it's a key element of it, and we're here, we're here talking about that. It's a key part of the infrastructure play. Um, we actually are, are, are launching around the integration of Helion, our, our cloud stack with the NSX, so that we, you can actually have you know, software-defined networking. Um, there's a number of other things we're doing in terms of just the expansion of our, our vSAN ready node qualifications. So uh, whether it be across storage, you know, servers, composable, networking, uh, as well as the lifecycle support, all of that is part of our technology offering and footprint. And, and from an alliance perspective, we continue to do the same thing we've done. We've been at every VMworld since its inception. We are absolutely the partner of choice, and to Don's point, we're the majority leader, whether it's compute and ESX, whether it's you know storage, um, whether it's NSX, all of the integ integration we've done. So all of the technology that we're doing is linked very much into their portfolio and vice versa. I mean, it's not a secret. I mean, the folks who may or may not know for the younger generation, HPE had a huge footprint in the data center. In fact, if I was going to call HP anything at this point, it's more of a data center company than anything else of its 
of its stuff that they have. You all see software, uh, you guys have software and other things, but your real legacy as a company history and innovation is data center. Oh, that's absolutely right. And so it makes a lot of sense. So the question is, okay, with, uh, and I, and I want to get your thoughts on this, because I remember it was a 2012, Paul Moritz, remember the big announcement was, this is the year that there's more virtualized servers than actual physical servers. And oh, the Twitter stream is blown, oh, it's a death to the server business. Actually not. Same thing we're hearing here from Gelsinger, is that by 2021, um, there'll be more um, machine enabled than human connected to the internet. So you're seeing the IoT explosion, mm -hmm. the server business is still booming. Talk through that trend, because you know, that is a key part of virtualization relationship with the data center now, it looks out at the IoT. Yeah, How do you guys tell that story? How do you tie that together? Well, I think if you look at just the curves that Pat showed, right, he certainly showed that the traditional IT as it's today, fine today is going to decline pretty rapidly. Um, but service provider, private cloud, as well as workload-centric computing around IoT or high-performance computing or some of these mission-critical apps are going to continue to grow as an element of the broader infrastructure. If you combine those two curves, what it says is this business is still growing where it's located, how it's instrumented, how it's deployed is going to be different. But the infrastructure um, is still mattering and you, you, you can't run cloud on software. You run it on infrastructure. So I got to get your guys' take. You must have had a little bit of a, you know, you know, smile when Pat was talking about, you know, this, this keynote. He talked about ecosystem, HP success there and, and competitive advantage, check. Uh, hybrid cloud, check. Operations, kind of focus of cloud check, all where you guys are strong. But the thing that got me, and this is where I want to get your thoughts is, he said the word manage cloud as key. That is what HP's been saying for how many years now? This is kind of the focus, operationalizing cloud. Does, I mean, how does that resonate and how does that translate into the customer conversation? Well, I, th I think, you know, it's very consistent with the strategy that we've been articulating for some time, so it's no surprise. And we've been executing on that. We've, we've publicly stated our strategy is to deliver hybrid IT solutions to solve customers' toughest problems and really to transition into this new world. I mean, that's not the sole thing we have to do. Um, we have to have to secure their data. We have to help them with big data problems. We have to help them drive mobility and the, and the, the shift to uh, you know mobile devices as well as Internet of Things. So all these things are part of our strategy as well. We've been messaging it. It's not a surprise because that's what most customers are telling us and VMware that they're talk, you know, talking right, so about the CXO same thing. so or CXO talks to you uh, and they say, Chuck, okay, give me the update on the relationship with VMware vis-a-vis -vis the technology, not the, not the strategic alliance, but yeah. like the technology. Uh, where's the investment from an innovation strategy standpoint with VMware? Well, I, I think we just talked about it. We're, we're investing to integrate um, you know, VMware, whether it be ESX or their, uh, if you will, upstack components into our composable infrastructure. That's going to be a key component because, cut our, quite honestly, our customers want that. Um, the, there's huge integration with our three-part storage and how we're making that work. Um, we're doing a lot of work. Matter of fact, we're leading the way in terms of the integration uh, of our tools with NSX. Um, our overriding management platform in one view, that's all integrated and instrumented at a leadership position relative to anybody other's tools within the VMware ecosystem. And we've got that open, so it's not exclusive to VMware. On one view. On one view, correct. Yeah, so yeah. all of that is a big part of it. So our data center strategy is very much, if you will, co coexist, and we are developing and innovating alongside VMware um, as part of our strategy. So one view, a lot of props on one view. A lot of people like that product. VMware customers the same way, and I yeah. really haven't dug into that. Yeah, yeah. So what what they like is that they can have, if you will, a single pane of glass from an infrastructure management from a virtual and physical management. Um, if they want to pop into vSphere or uh, some of the other consoles that are specific to a VMware product, they can do that directly from one view. They can do it whether it's server, you know, servers and compute, whether it's storage volumes. Now, whether it's if you're networking and essentially instrumenting, deploying or managing a, a, a network overlay. So all of that is a big part of what we bring to the table and all from a single pane of glass. From a business standpoint, P&L wise, how's the growth? Any update on some of the stats? Well, we're, on? we're in our quiet period, so we can't really talk <laughs> about that. I would tell you, though, um, we're very excited about our strategy, what we're doing at HPE, and as you said, we're the leader in the data center. Um, we got to make that a better known fact out there, uh, but uh, the bottom line is it's a, it's a big part of what we're doing. And I think the alliance, alliance that we have with, uh, with VMware and others, um, the partnership, you know, if you will, just 
DNA that we have within Hewlett Packard Enterprise is what makes us successful now and will for the future. Don, I want to get your thoughts because I want to get from a strategic alliance standpoint. Obviously, HP has a great HP, HPE now has a great relationship. Has a great had a great relationship. Now HP has a great relationship with with uh, VMware. But you got to be pretty pumped to see IBM Cloud up on stage. Only from the standpoint of to our point earlier about the VMware really putting it out there, saying, "No, no, no, we are going to be independent." Because now, you know, Dell used to compete with IBM and HP. <laughs> now they're all together in one big independent company. How does that affect you guys? And, and talk about that relationship and when you see those kinds of moves. Yeah, I mean, two parts. So one, it's great to see that openness that VMware is going to be independent and that IBM partnership, I think, is a testimony to that. If you look at that, uh, that announcement, you know, we're going to continue to work with VMware in that space and we're going to continue to develop and, and go. Um, when I think about what, what we announced this week, it was kind of interesting. A lot of the things that we talked about were on the new wave, the new generation of solution sets. So a couple of examples, and Chuck mentioned it briefly, was OpenStack integration with NSX. So HP Helion is now integrated with NSX. The second thing that, uh, that we announced was around IoT and our EdgeLine 4000 server mm -hmm. certified for NSX. You know, that solution set will be the most powerful solution set for IoT using NSX in the marketplace. So It seems like NSX has got a lot more kind of there under the covers that people aren't really talking about. Yeah. It used to be, okay, it's just Nasir stuff recycled in to some SDDC strategy for VMware. It's a nice but hockey stick. It's got stick. some security, I mean, the security. Can you guys just spend a minute to talk about NSX and you know what that means? Because it's kind of a network. It's got some security aspects to it. But what does that mean to the customer? What's the impact to them? Well, I think, you know, I mean, we don't go into too much detail, but for, for us, it, it is where customers are in a VMware environment and they actually want to instrument, uh, you know, uh, or deploy a particular network topology. They can do that in software. So it's, it's much easier for them, first of all, to get, it, to get that infrastructure and the network, uh, you know, set up and then to manage it. And then if they want to change it within a, you know, it, within an environment, they can do that uh, essentially um, you know, with the click of a, a, of a tool. And so that's absolutely what the benefit is. Software-defined networking, NSX, essentially allows them to do that all in a secure way. The why we've integrated into the OpenStack and Helion is so that essentially it's not just about the, if you will, the network overlay, but also how do you actually deploy the service on top, how do you actually deploy the, um, you know, the, the application ultimately in that environment. That's why we've integrated it into Helion Stack and OpenStack. Right, so would you say that this is a true statement if I said to, uh, to a customer, if I was an HP uh, rep, um, the relationship with VMware vis-a-vis -vis NSX, we just said, is a key part of our composable infrastructure strategy. Yes, oh, without a doubt. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Um, relationship. What's next? What's going on? Any secret deals you can share? Nothing we can uh, share I know you're right in your now. Quiet yeah. period, but yeah, come yeah. on. <laughs> well, I mean, it's going to continue. There's more of the same. Any kind of like um, high level. Well, you know, as you saw us announce with Docker, with Microsoft, with VMware, we're concentrating very much on the outer edges. Right. It's everything from uh, Azure for IoT to the IoT announcement for EdgeLine with VMware. So there's a lot of focus on that side, and you'll see us continue to do that. Containers will be a key part of the strategy, and you know, you, you, certainly more to come. So, John, talk about the, this VM world um, for the folks watching who aren't here. What's different about VMware this year? What's the big aha in this keynote? What's the what's the, the key key point surfacing out of the first day here? Yeah, I, I think the what's different uh, for me the transition, uh, and it's been over the last eighteen months, right? This used to be really a, a hypervisor company, and I'm seeing VMware really change and moving into different directions that are that are going to be beneficial to the entire ecosystem. Everything from EUC under Sanjay's area to you know. VSAN and NSX, it's, it's a different conversation than we've had traditionally with VMware and with our customers, our joint customers. And that digital workspace stuff that Sanjay's working on certainly yeah. is enabled, Chuck, by your, your team's work on the server side and the composable. Essentially, that's, that's composable from a VMware standpoint. No, and it's a key area that we've been working on with them for some time, and, and you know, we'll see. And I, we're going to be on stage tomorrow, and, and uh, they'll talk about some of the work, and then we're in the booth and, and demonstrating how we've worked together in those spaces, and there's going to be more to come. For sure. You know, the one thing I was going to say about the alliance is uh, that what I see is that more and more partners coming to HP and Hewlett Packard Enterprise just because of our presence in the data center, our bias to partnership, and how we actually, you know, execute that um, and, and stay open in that ecosystem. Yeah, so. I get the question all the time from people I talk to. Say, hey, you know, John, the split, HP, HPE. I go, look, at HPE is basically a data center company with all this greatness kind of wrapped around it that's got, you know, different markets, certainly not some multi, you know, multinational company, but they are the roots and in the innovations, the data center. Yeah, I mean, right. you look at the, you know, the compute side all the way up through the stack, and certainly the Docker stuff appeals to the apps side, 
-hmm. So, you know, I love the composable messaging. I think that was, uh, you know, one, I think I walked away from HP Discover this year was, that's a home run. I mean, you guys make that happen, and you are making it happen. So final question, Chuck, is that what's different for your standpoint relative to the tech, VMworld this year, what's different this year? What's the new, new thing that's, that's coming out of VMworld that's different that might not be obvious to the folks that are, are paying attention? Well, I think we're, you know, instead of, you know, as Don said, I'd just say the same thing. Instead of it being at that sort of infrastructure hypervisor layer, it's a software-defined data center. It's essentially the, the cloud foundation, cloud platform. A lot of discussion about how um, VMware and, and, for that matter, how HP enables um, customers going into a hybrid cloud because it's a hybrid world. There's going to be elements that are going to be on-prem. There's going to be elements that are public. Some is going to be SaaS. Some of it's going to be, you know, infrastructure as a service. Being able to broker and manage that, that's what's happening today. And that's I mean, my takeaway is that I agree 100%. My, but I, my, I would add to that is that my takeaway is that you can see him really sharp on the focus on a persona basis to the cloud ops guy. Mm -hmm. And understanding yeah. that obviously digital transformation is happening. The other one is, um, this is kind of nuanced, but kind of a public, you know, admission that public cloud is real. Yeah. And so, okay, how do you put that together in the hybrid scenario? Yeah. And of course, manage the managed cloud thing becomes what happens exactly. in hybrid. So exactly. I think that's all stuff we've talked about in the past. Sure. Uh, you guys had a good vision on that. And again, you had converged infrastructure first. And I love the composable. I think that's the way to go. So congratulations. Thanks for Appreciate coming on theCUBE. Thanks. Chuck Don here. HPE, HP Enterprise here at VMworld 2016. Talk about the partnership, the importance the neutral independence of VMware uh, in the ecosystem 2.0 as it transfers the crowd. I'm Cloud. I'm John Furrier. You're watching theCUBE.